my lovely assistant and I are going to set the valves on this 1953 Hercules engine. It's uh, in a SAE 300 Lincoln welder. Quite an old style, huge, heavy thing, and uh, and I think the motor is in pretty good shape. So we're gonna we're gonna try and get her to bark here one of these days. Let's give you a quick tour here. So there's a few items missing. The the hub cap is missing off the exciter. The shields are missing off the side. Uh, the air cleaner was missing, and um, there was a generator on at one time. That's missing, and I guess being a magneto, maybe they uh, they just didn't bother with a charging system. They put the Zeidler system on. But uh, anyway, the uh, preliminaries say that the engine's going to be okay. It's not full of uh, rusted spark plugs, anything like that. There's a timing hole hole in here. It took me a while to find the marks on the flywheel. There's one set of marks, I believe, at 23 degrees before top dead center. And the other, uh, then you bring the flywheel down a little bit so you get top dead center number one. So one is for spark and one is for uh, for timing pur purposes for the magneto. Start controls are on the front. Another lovely assistant just showed up. It's been dropped once and this, uh, I don't know if you can see, it appears that the thing is, uh, has been shifted, even the radiator is bent. We'll try and straighten that out. That should be interesting. So we've got our running, our firing order here. We've got one, five, three, six, two, four. When you chop that in half, you get one, five, three, six, two, four underneath. So these are the running mates. And in this case here, we're coming down the running mate of uh, number six cylinder, which is a rear cylinder. And this is going to be coming down as we go in normal engine rotation. And it'll get to the point where the intake valve is just starting to open. So that's when it's called uh, that it's rocking. When we're rocking on number six cylinder then we can set the valves on number one. In this case the exhaust calls for a little bit of wind here. The exhaust calls for eight thousandths and the intake... Oh, I haven't got a time with my little sign here. There. Intake for six thousandths. So I've been through and I've set the valves already and, uh, and all that seems good. There's no sign that any moisture has gotten into the engine and rusted all this up. I've seen some real messes in here. There's no sticky valves. Everything uh, seems fine. So I'm going to uh, rotate the engine in normal rotation so that this comes down just at the time that the intake valve opens. And then uh, that will allow me to set the valves on number one, which, which I've already done, but I'll do a little demo here. So I've got the starter off. I'm just using this uh, fry bar here to slowly rotate the engine. As you can see, this this lifter is going down on number six cylinder, and very soon it will reach the, near the bottom, and the intake will start to open. So it's on the end of its exhaust stroke, and ready to pull in another charge of fresh air and fuel. So, there. So this is just starting to raise. This is at the bottom. Now we can set the valves on number one cylinder. So I like this uh, this set of feelers as compared to a straight one. It kind of goes around corners so you would just pick the six and the eight, leave those two hang out and uh, so you can see now that at number one there's, there's clearance between the lifters and the end of the valve, the tip of the valve. So you would check with your, uh, easy to tell which which valve is which, so this is obviously the exhaust one. Intake, intake, and then exhaust again. Another exhaust, intake, that sort of thing. So it's easy to follow, so there's uh, a lot of them don't have different dimensions for the intake and exhaust. So you just want to check this clearance in between here with the feeler gauge and uh, make sure that if it's too loose or too tight that the feeler gauge won't go in, then you have to make an adjustment. In this case, you're really simple. Uh, two half inch wrenches. Just get that around so you can put the wrench on the lifter. 
and you make the adjustment with the other half inch on the uh, on top of there until you get that clearance in there just right. So the next one in my flyaway firing order, it looks like it's really gone this time. So we've uh, had number six rocking. We've set number one. We're going to move the uh, move into the next one in the firing order, which is number two, normal rotation. So when we uh, when we see number two rocking, then we can set number five in the same manner as we set one. There, you can see the uh, exhaust valve closing on number two cylinder. That's this one here. And that other, this little critter right here is just starting to open. So now with this cylinder rocking, this number five over here is the running mate and we can set it. And again, they're both free so we know that that's, uh, that's correct. And anyway, so when it comes around time to set the mag, I will uh, I will find those marks again on the other side. I will get a rough adjustment by coming back to number six cylinder here, getting it so it's in a position of rocking. Then I know that number one cylinder is at top dead center compression. Then I'll be able to set the mag onto there and, and time it from there. And my lovely assistants and I, thank you for watching. <laughs>